Old Meg, she was a gypsy and lived upon the moors. Her bed, it was the brown heath turf and her house was out of doors. Her apples were swart blackberries, her currants pods of broom. Her wine was dew of the wild white rose, her book a churchyard tomb. Her brothers were the craggy hills, her sisters larch and trees. Alone with her great family, she lived as she did please. No breakfast had she many a morn, nor dinner many a noon. Instead of supper, she would stare full hard against the moon. But every morn of woodbine fresh, she made her garlanding, and every night the dark glen hue she wove and she would sing. And with her fingers old and brown, she plaited mats of rushes and gave them to the cottagers she met among the bushes. Old Meg was brave as Margaret Queen and tall as Amazon. An old red blanket cloak she wore, a chip hat she had on. God rest her aged bone somewhere. She died full long ago. Souls of poets dead and gone, what Elysium have ye known? Happy field or mossy cavern, choicer than the mermaid tavern? Have ye tippled drink more fine than mine host's canary wine? Or are fruits of paradise sweeter than those dainty pies of venison? O oh, generous food, dressed as though bold Robin Hood would with his maid Marian sup and browse from horn and can. I have heard that on a day mine host's signboard flew away. Nobody knew whither till an astrologer's old quill to a sheepskin gave the story. He said he saw you in your glory underneath a new old sign sipping beverage divine and pledging with contented smack the mermaid in the zodiac. Souls of poets dead and gone, what Elysium have ye known? Happy field or mossy cavern, choicer than the mermaid tavern? O oh, goddess, hear these tuneless numbers, rung by sweet enforcement and remembrance dear, and pardon that thy secret should be sung even into thine own soft conched ear. Surely I dreamt today, or did I see the wind psyche with awakened eyes? I wandered in a forest thoughtlessly, and, on a sudden, 
fainting with surprise, saw two fair creatures couched side by side in deepest grass beneath the whispering roof of leaves and trembling blossoms where there ran a brooklet scarce espied. Mid-hushed, cool-rooted flowers, fragrant-eyed blue, silver-white, and budded Tyrian. They lay calm breathing on the bedded grass, their arms embraced and their pinions too. Their lips touched not, but had not bade adieu, as if disjoined by soft-handed slumber, and ready still past kisses to outnumber, a tender eye-dawn of Aurorian love. The winged boy I knew, but who wast thou, O oh, happy, happy dove, his psyche true? O oh, latest born and loveliest vision far of all Olympus' faded hierarchy, fairer than Phoebe's sapphire region star or vesper amorous glowworm of the sky, fairer than these, though temple thou hast none, nor altar heaped with flowers, nor virgin choir to make delicious moan upon the midnight hours. No voice, no lute, no pipe, no incense sweet from chain-swung censer teeming. No shrine, no grove, no oracle, no heat of pale-mouthed prophet dreaming. O oh, brightest, though too late for antique vows, too, too late for the fond believing leer, when holy were the haunted forest boughs, holy the air, the water, and the fire. Yet even in these days, so far retired from happy pieties, thy lucent fans fluttering among the faint Olympians, I see and sing by my own eyes inspired, so let me be thy choir and make a moan upon the midnight hours, thy voice, thy lute, thy pipe, thy incense sweet, from swinged censer teeming, thy shrine, thy grove, thy oracle, thy heat of pale-mouthed prophet dreaming. Yes, I will be thy priest and build a fane in some untrodden region of my mind, where branch thoughts new grown with pleasant pain instead of pines shall murmur in the wind. Far, far around shall those dark clustered trees fledge the wild ridged mountain steep by steep, and there by zephyrs, streams, and birds and bees the moss-lain dryads shall be lulled to sleep. And in the midst of this wide quietness a rosy sanctuary will I dress, with the wreath trellis of a working brain, with buds and bells and stars without a name, with all the gardener fancy ever could feign, who breeding flowers will never breed the same, and there shall be for thee all soft delight that shadowy thought can win, a bright torch and a casement open at night to let the warm love in. The day is gone, and all its sweets are gone. Sweet voice, sweet lips, soft hand, and softer breast. Warm breath, light whisper, tender semitone. 
bright eyes, accomplished shape, and languorous waist. Faded the flower and all its budded charms, faded the sight of beauty from my eyes, faded the shape of beauty from my arms, faded the voice, warmth, whiteness, paradise. Vanished unseasonably at shut of eve, when the dusk holy day or holy night of fragrant curtained love begins to weave the woof of darkness thick for hid delight. But as I've read love's missal through today, he'll let me sleep, seeing I fast and pray. One morn before me were three figures seen with bowed necks and joined hands, side-faced, and one behind the other stepped serene. In placid sandals and in white robes graced, they passed like figures on a marble urn. When shifted round to see the other side, they came again as when the urn once more is shifted round, the first seen shades return. And they were strange to me, as may be tied with vases to one deep Infidian lore. How is it, shadows, that I knew ye not? How came ye muffled in so hush a mask? Was it a silent, deep disguised plot to steal away and leave without a task my idle days? Ripe was the drowsy hour, the blissful cloud of summer indolence, benumbed my eyes, my pulse grew less and less. Pain had no sting, and pleasure's wreath no flower. Oh, why did ye not melt and leave my sense unhaunted, quite of all but nothingness? A third time passes they by, and passing, turned each one the face a moment whiles to me. Then faded, and to follow them I burned and ached for wings, because I knew the three. The first was a fair maid, and love was her name. The second was ambition, pale of cheek, and ever watchful with fatigued eye. The last, whom I love more, the more of blame is heaped upon her, maiden most unmeek, I knew to be my demon posy. They faded, and forsooth I wanted wings. O oh, folly, what is love, and where is it? And for that poor ambition, it springs from a man's little heart's short fig fever fit for posy. No, she has not a joy, at least for me, so sweet as drowsy noons and evenings steeped in honeyed indolence. Oh, for an age so sheltered from annoy that I may ne never know how change the moons or hear the voice of busy common sense. And once more they came by, alas, wherefore? My sleep had been embroidered with dim dreams. My soul had been a lawn besprinkled over with flowers and stirring shades and baffled beams. The morn was clouded and no shower fell, though in her lids hung the sweet tears of May. The open casement pressed a new-leaved vine, let in the budding warmth and throstle lay. 
O oh, shadows, twas a time to bid farewell upon your skirts and fallen no tears of mine. So, ye three ghosts, adieu. Ye cannot raise my head cool bedded in the flowery grass, for I would not be dieted with praise, a pet lamb in a sentimental farce. Fade softly from my eyes and be once more in mask-like figures on the dreamy urn. Farewell, I yet have visions for the night, and for the day faint visions there is store. Vanish, ye phantoms, from my idle sprite into the clouds and never more return. Poetry of earth is never dead. When all the birds are faint with the hot sun and hide in cooling trees, a voice will run from hedge to hedge about the new mown mead, that is, the grasshoppers. He takes the lead in summer luxury. He has never done with his delights, for when tired out with fun, he rests at ease beneath some pleasant weed. The poetry of earth is ceasing never. On a lone winter evening, when the frost has wrought a silence, from the stove there shrills the cricket's song in warmth increasing ever, and seems to one in drowsiness half lost, the grasshoppers among some grassy hills. <laughs> Ail thee, knight at arms, alone and palely loitering. The sedge has withered from the lake, and no birds sing. O oh, what can ail thee, knight at arms, so haggard and so woe begone? The squirrel's granary is full, and the harvest's done. I see a lily on thy brow, with anguish moist and fever dew and on thy cheeks a fading rose fast withereth too. I met a lady in the meads, full beautiful, a fairy's child. Her hair was long, her foot was light, and her eyes were wild. I made a garland for her head, and bracelets too, and fragrant zone. 
She looked at me as she did love and made sweet moon. I set her on my pacing steed and nothing else saw all day long for side long she would bend and sing a fairy song. She found me roots of relish sweet and honey wild and manna dew and sure in language strange she said, I love thee true. She took me to her elfin grot and there she wept and sighed full sore, and there I shut her wild eyes with kisses for. And there she lulled me asleep, and there I dreamed. Ah, woe betide, the latest dream I ever dreamt on the cold hillside. I saw pale kings and princes too, pale warriors, death pale were they all, they cried, La belle dame sans merci, the habit thrall. I saw their starved lips in the gloam with horrid warning gaped wide, and I awoke and found me here on the cold hill's side. And this is why I sojourn here, alone and palely loitering, though the sedge is withered from the lake and no birds sing. Thou still unravished bride of quietness, thou foster child of silence and slow time, sylvan historian who canst thus express a flowery tale more sweetly than our rhyme. What leaf-fringed legend haunts about thy shape of deities or mortals or of both in temp or the dales of Arcady? What men or gods are these? What maidens loath? What mad pursuit? What struggle to escape? What pipes and timbrels? What wild ecstasy? Heard melodies are sweet, but those unheard are sweeter. Therefore, ye soft pipes, play on. Not to the sensual ear, but more endeared pipe to the spirit ditties of no tone. Fair youth beneath the trees, thou canst not leave thy song, nor ever can these trees be bare. Bold lover, never, never canst thou kiss, though winning near the goal yet. Do not grieve, she cannot fade, though thou hast not thy bliss, forever wilt thou love, and she be fair. Ah, happy, happy boughs that cannot shed your leaves nor ever bid the spring adieu. And happy melodist unwearied, forever piping songs, forever new. More happy love, more happy, happy love, forever warm and still to be enjoyed, forever panting and forever young. All breathing human passion far above that leaves a heart 
high sorrowful and cloyed, a burning forehead and a parching tongue. Who are these coming to the sacrifice? To what green altar, O mysterious priest, leadest thou that heifer lowing at the skies, and all her silken flanks with garlands dressed? What little town by river or seashore, or mountain built with peaceful citadel, is emptied of this folk, this pious morn? And, little town, thy streets forevermore will silent be, and not a soul to tell why thou art desolate can ever return. O Attic shape, fair attitude, with braid of marble men and maidens overwrought, with forest branches and the trodden weed, thou, silent form, dost tease us out of thought as doth eternity, cold pastoral. When old age shall this generation waste, Thou shalt remain in midst of other woe than ours, a friend to man to whom thou sayest, Beauty is truth, truth, beauty. That is all ye know on earth and all ye need to know. heart aches, and a drowsy numbness pains my sense, as though of hemlock I had drunk, or emptied some dull opiate to the drains. One minute passed, and leaf wards had sunk, tis not through envy of thy happy lot, but being too happy in thine happiness, that thou, light-winged dryad of the trees, in some melodious plot, of beech and green and shadows numberless, singest of summer in full-throated ease. Oh, for a drought of vintage that hath been cooled a long age in the deep delved earth, tasting of flora and the country green, dance and provincial song and sunburnt mirth. Oh, for a beaker full of the warm south Full of the true, the blushful hippocrene, With beaded bubbles winking at the brim, And purple-stained mouth, That I might drink and leave the world unseen, And with thee fade away into the forest dim. Fade far away, dissolve, and quite forget What thou among the leaves hast never known, The weariness, the fever, and the fret here, where men sit and hear each other groan, where palsy shakes a few sad last gray hairs, where youth grows pale and spectre thin and dies, where but to think is to be full of sorrow and leaden-eyed despairs, where beauty cannot keep her lustrous eyes or new love pine at them beyond tomorrow. Away, away, for I will fly to thee, not charioted by Bacchus and his pards, but on the viewless wings of poesy, through the dull brain perplexes and retards already with thee. Tender is the night, and haply the queen moon is on her throne, clustered around by all her starry fays. But here there is no light, save what from heaven is with the breezes blown through the verdurous glooms and winding mossy ways. I cannot see what flowers are at my feet, 
nor what soft incense hangs upon the boughs, but in embalmed darkness guess each sweet wherewith the seasonable month endows the grass, the thicket, and the fruit tree wild, white hawthorn, and the pastoral agrutine, fast fading violets covered up in leaves, and mid May's eldest child, the coming musk rose full of dewy wine, the murmurous haunt of flies on summer eaves. Darkling I listen, and for many a time I have been half in love with easeful death, called him soft names in many amused rhyme, to take into the air my quiet breath. Now, more than ever, seems it rich to die, to cease upon the midnight with no pain, while thou art pouring forth thy soul abroad in such an ecstasy. Still, wouldst thou sing, and I have ears in vain, to thy high requiem become a song. Thou wast not born for death, immortal bird, no hungry generations tread thee down. The voice I hear this passing night was heard in ancient days by emperor and clown. Perhaps the selfsame song that found a path through the sad heart of Ruth when, sick for home, she stood in tears amid the alien corn, the same that oft times hath charmed magic casements, opening on the foam of perilous seas in fairy lands forlorn. Forlorn, the very word is like a bell to toll me back from thee to my soul self. Adieu, the fancy cannot cheat so well as she is famed to do, deceiving hell. Adieu, adieu, thy plaintive anthem fades past the near meadows over the still stream, up the hillside, and now tis buried deep in the next valley glades. Was it a vision or a waking dream? Fled is that music. Do I wake? or sleep. If by dull rhymes our English must be chained, and like Andromeda the sonnet sweet fettered in spite of pained loveliness, let us find out if we must be constrained sandals more interwoven and complete to fit the naked foot of poesy. Let us inspect the lyre and weigh the stress of every chord and see what may be gained by ear industrious and attention meet, misers of sound and syllable, no less than Midas of his coinage. Let us be jealous of dead leaves in the bay wreath crown. So, if we may not let the muse be free, she will be bound with garlands of her own. Four seasons fill the measure of the year. There are four seasons in the mind of man. 
He has his lusty spring when fancy clear takes in all beauty with an easy span. He has his summer when luxuriously spring's honeyed cud of youthful thought he loves to ruminate, and by such dreaming high is nearest unto heaven. Quiet coves his soul has in its autumn, when his wings he furleth close, contented so to look on mists in idleness, to let fair things pass by unheeded as a threshold brook. He has his winter, too, of pale misfeature, or else he would forego his mortal nature. Bright star, would I were steadfast as thou art. Not in lone splendor hung aloft the night and watching with eternal lids apart like nature's patient, sleepless eremite. The moving waters at their priest-like task of pure ablution round earth's human shores or gazing on the new soft fallen mask of snow upon the mountains and the moors. No. Yet still steadfast, still unchangeable, pillowed upon my fair love's ripening breast to feel forever its soft fall and swell. Awake forever in a sweet unrest, still, still to hear her tender taken breath, and so live ever, or else swoon to death. <laughs> Ever let the fancy roam, pleasure never is at home. At a touch, sweet pleasure melteth, like to bubbles when rain pelteth. Then let winged fancy wander through the thought still spread beyond her. Open wide the mind's cage door, she'll dart forth and cloudward soar. O oh, sweet fancy, let her loose, summer's joys are spoilt by use and the enjoying of the spring fades as does its blossoming. Autumn's red-lipped fruitage, too, blushing through the mist and dew, cloys with tasting. What do then? Sit thee by the ingle when the sear faggot blazes bright, spirit of a winter's night, when the soundless earth is muffled and the caked snow is shuffled from the plowboy's heavy shoon when the night doth meet the moon in a dark conspiracy to banish even from the sky. Sit thee there and send abroad with a mind self overawed. Fancy, high commissioned, send her. She has vassals to attend her. She will bring, in spite of frost, beauties that the earth hath lost. She will bring thee altogether all delights of summer weather. 
all the buds and bells of May, from the dewy sward or thorny spray, all the heaped autumn's wealth with a still mysterious stealth. She will mix these pleasures up like three fit wines in a cup, and thou shalt quaff it. Thou shalt hear distant harvest carols clear, rustle of the reaped corn, sweet birds antheming the morn, and in the same moment, hark, tis the early April lark, or the rooks with busy caw, foraging for sticks and straw. Thou shalt at one glance behold the daisy and the marigold, white-plumed lilies, and the first hedge-grown primrose that hath burst, shadeth hyacinth, always sapphire queen of the mid-May and every leaf and every flower pearled with the self-same shower. Thou shalt see the field mouse peep, meager from its cell sleep, and the snake all winter thin, cast on sunny bank its skin. Freckled nest eggs thou shalt see, hatching in the hawthorn tree, when the hen bird's wing doth rest, quiet on her mossy nest. Then the hurry and alarm when the beehive casts its swarm, acorns ripe down pattering while the autumn breezes sing. O oh, sweet fancy, let her loose, everything is spoiled by use. Where's the cheek that doth not fade, too much gazed at? Where's the maid whose lip mature is ever new? Where's the eye, however blue, doth not weary? Where's the face one would meet in every place? Where's the voice, however soft, one would hear so very oft? At a touch, sweet pleasure melteth, like to bubbles when rain pelteth. Let, then, winged fancy find thee a mistress to thy mind, dulcet-eyed as Ceres' daughter, ere the god of torment taught her how to frown and how to chide, with a waist and with a side white as Hebe's, when her zone slipped its golden clasp and down fell her kirtle to her feet while she held the goblet sweet. And Jove grew languid, break the mesh of the fancy silken leash, quickly break her prison string, and such joys as these she'll bring. Let the winged fancy roam, pleasure never is at home. Thank you.